The peace deal has arrived, and you know what? To be honest, it wasn't that bad for Germany and Austria-Hungary. Yeah, I mean, everything is fine. Look at them. They still have all their control, pretty much. I mean, Germany was forced to release Poland. Um, it's actually kind of the Russian or the Soviets. I don't know who's going to come out of this on top, but uh, they were the ones that ended up losing the most from this war, and they were a part of the Allies. Um, so it's December 1919. I'm going to keep pressing forward. We're going to do another episode, uh, and we'll just kind of see what happens. If nothing happens by the end of this episode, then I'm going to end the series here. But uh, who knows? I, I kind of like what we're seeing. Let's go into Austria. They're still, they're still fine. I mean, uh, everything kind of looks okay for them, I guess. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that we're at 91% uh, world tension, which means at this point, uh, democratic nations, if, if the rules kind of still apply from kind of traditional vanilla Hearts of Iron 4, d democratic nations can declare war. At 90%, I think at 90%, maybe it's, I don't think it's 100%. Uh, again, the mod could change that, who knows. Uh, the only real thing that happened to Austria-Hungary, I mean, they lost a bit of land, obviously France grabbed a whole bunch here in the Baltic region, but uh, they were changed to democratic. So Germany, well, they always, they still hate the Allies, uh, I think both of them do, but uh, yeah, they were both forced to change to democratic, but besides, they're, the, they're no longer authoritarian regimes. Uh, the Republic of Turkey has now arrived, so the Ottomans have been completely killed. And uh, now the big result here, which I think could lead to some interesting scenarios, is what happens between Russia and the Soviets. Now at the moment, um, the Russians look like they're going to win. I think they're going to take back their land. Uh, the Soviets are very, very close to capitulating here. Most of their VPs, I think, have been taken. I mean, if they were to focus... On take oh well you know it's that's gonna be tough either way because you still have a lot of Soviet regiments kind of just chilling chilling back here waiting to see when when to go for it I guess I don't I don't even know but I think we'll see the results of whatever happens uh, here it, by the end of this video another thing I want to keep in mind is uh, all the factions so there's lots and lots of different factions taking place we've got the Soviets a part of the common turn um, I, I shouldn't say lots and lots but there's there's multiple different factions and at this point, again, you know, if you ever finished up a Hearts of Iron 4 game, just like a traditional Hearts of Iron 4 game, and you finished World War II, World War II you'll see people leave the Allies or the winning faction. So that could be the Axis or the Common Turn. It all depends. Uh, I'm wondering if we're going to see that same thing here in this mod. Like the U.S. Would the U.S. leave the Allies? Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that Germany lost their territory inside of Africa. They've pretty much lost most of their stuff. Um, I don't think the Ottomans have their... Didn't they have a, like a puppet or something beforehand? No. Hey, they still like the Austria... Oh, this is just Austria now. So I guess Hungary... I don't know why I said Austria-Hungary. Uh, I guess the Hungary part has been for some reason gone. Now it's just Austria. At least they still exist, right? They were not so lucky after uh, World War One. And uh, also China being kind of a bigger factor. Now, if the Soviets stay on top, which I don't think they will, then I'd assume that China might go common turn because, you know, obviously the Soviets have a stake in that. Since the Russian Empire, and remember, the Russians are a fascist country or a fascist uh, ideology. So, um, can I please select Russia? There we go. So... If they were to gain control, no matter what happens, this would be where the next enemy pops up, more than likely. I mean, I guess the democratic nations could, uh, uh, again, the, the world tension is going down so fast, it's hard to say. It's hard to say if they, they would declare war. It's unlikely, I think. Um, let's go ahead and open this back up and kind of see where they are. Uh, Soviets are still about the same. Looks like the Russians, actually, are starting to finally uh, get some... You know, clo getting closer to capitulation, at least the Soviets were to get a little bit back. Oh, interesting. So, uh, could we be seeing the Soviets... Are this, Do the Soviets see any sort of volunteer forces? I don't think anybody from the Allies would help them, right? I can't see that happening. Ooh, yeah. If, if you get some of your, your VPs back, this could easily switch back to uh, Soviet control. It's 1920, so we'll have to wait and see. Also, how is South America doing? So we've got a Brazil that is uh, pretty democratic at the moment. Venezuela, who, you know, uh, famously went fascist, or had a fascist 
leader in in play still nothing from them so this this kind of a democratic uprising here uh, I do want to check on what the states might be thinking let's go and select the states and look into uh, their national focus tree aircraft production so they're going down towards the right side but again this is like the more like less interesting stuff uh, for the most part I, I like what happens politically what they can choose between pacifism they could technically go for that all this stuff is kind of cut off from them decolonize committee liberate the Philippines oh that's right they do have control of the Philippines huh yes they do there it is now did Germany lose anything here France all wow France really came out on top of that war it seems like if anything France is uh, is much more powerful after World War one that is uh, that is kind of the the general consensus here because they've got all this and they took a little bit of land uh, did they take did they take the, the the German African territory too were they the ones that got that I know that the British I saw the the window pop up it was like the British took two states I think France took like 18 so yeah they were really the the big benefit the benefiters beneficiaries something like that I don't know big words you guys yeah I, you guys can make the big up big words up for me I guess now would there be some sort of conversion that's the next thing so if nothing does happen um, would there be a conversion to put it back into just regular uh, hearts of iron maybe may actually I think that yeah I think maybe uh, I think you have to convert it I don't think I could just load up without the mod but but then again we'll, we'll see we'll see this is still not over uh, the Soviets now are coming out of nowhere and they are pushing the Russian Empire back and we're actually having very nice performance because not every single battle that what is this message from Germany changes their diplomatic status with us cancels non aggression pack okay so the, there's diplomatic things still occurring non aggression pacts are being canceled what is the Ukraine I didn't even figure that out okay so they're kind of in the middle some of these other kind of all over the place Democratic, there's kind of a, a fascist uprising. Which, if Russia, oh, it, it does. I don't think Russia's gonna make it on top of this. I don't. Uh, it's really hard to say. I mean, the Soviets are still on the ropes, but it seems like they're pushing more forward. Oh, that's cool. Little question marks. Um, there are 81 factories, 1.1 million manpower, while Russia's at 1.2 only 29 factories that's what's gonna ultimately kill them if they can't get more of that and it looks like they're defending pretty well I mean they only have like geez I don't know probably like 15 15 divisions oh the Soviets are totally outnumbering them look at this okay there's no way the Soviets don't don't come back well that would have been interesting because Russia would have been the clear you know fascist country Oh, so did the Ottomans become democratic too? They did. So they are now uh, democratic Turkey, pretty much. Yeah, if the Russians were to, to be the ones to rise up, the Empire of Russia, I, sh I should say, would have been an interesting scenario because you would have had Ukraine, Latvia, and Estonia that could have all fallen to uh, to the same fascist regime. Poland, maybe, maybe Poland too. Who knows? What I think is kind of funny is that uh, Bulgaria here, sitting with their own faction, the, the still the central powers, they're the only central power left after Austria and Germany were, were forced to leave. Yeah, I mean, because a lot of these countries are democratic, I, I don't think it's likely that they would leave their, uh, their faction. Why? I mean, unless they, unless they were fascist or communist, because at this stage in the game, that's what they would need to become before... Like, real crazy stuff begins to happen. So, they would need to... I, and I don't I don't see that happening. I don't see any sort of AI coup, coups taking place. And I don't know. Let, let, let's double check on this. We always got to check in on this. Yeah, the Soviets are getting some power back, but there's this is barely inching forward. The Russian Empire, 14% towards capitulation. Um... A lot of the VPs that the Russian Empire controls, where are they? Well, I mean, you're going to split these guys up. It's it's only a matter of time. Okay, so we can safely assume that the Soviets will will stay in power. I, I think that they just don't have any divisions. 
they're and they're running out of a lot of manpower too. So the Republic of China is a really big force that I think could could play out into some interesting things. They're they're probably the biggest country that isn't democratic. Uh, Japan isn't either, right? Yeah, Japan hasn't chosen either. So yeah, you can definitely tell that if something were to take place, it'd be out of Eastern Asia. Uh, yeah, South America is is already a pretty democratic stronghold with Brazil and everything like that. Um, Mexican Republic. I mean, what is Mexico going to do against both Canada and the United States? That would be tough. That'd be tough for them to, you know, I don't know, make something happen. Oh, Germany was actually, uh, Germany likes the Soviets. Oh, wow. Okay. So this is good for, oh, and now there's kind of a, a good opinion. Austria has a good opinion with Spain and Sweden and the Soviets and the, the Republic of, of Turkey. Turkey has, I'm sorry, Spain is, Spain has chosen. They're, they're pretty much guaranteed democratic nation too. Just wondering about that. Just kind of curious. Out of all the countries, because I was just kind of like overlooking some of the countries that haven't chosen to be on a certain faction. Now, I, I believe Germany and Austria could still join the common turn. Can't they? They could still... Ah, there's going to be a big diplomatic modifier, though. They can't just join the faction without being communists themselves. Although there seems to be... Is there any sort of growing popularity in Germany? No, it's staying at about 13.2. This is staying about 60.2. It's really up to uh, the Soviets at this point to start to spread com communism. Oh, that's kind of interesting because you've got just the Russians pushing forward towards the east, but the Soviets pushing back, eating up this territory. Germany just declared war on France. Okay, and that was a democratic nation, too. Well, I mean, they've got... They, yeah, they are democratic. Wait a second. Did you just... Did you just pull everybody into the war? Germany, why did you do this? You you waited like two years, dude. Well, there seems to be... We could very quickly see a World War II. If Germany calls in all their, all their allies, which they don't have any at the moment... You need a faction, buddy. You can't just jump in there on the allies and fight all of them. What are you doing, Germany? <laughs> I'm actually really surprised. I did not think this was going to happen. Um, okay. Okay, Germany, you do you. How, let's, uh, let's go ahead and check on these guys. How bad is it for them? They're fighting everybody, dude. Holy crap, Germany. What have you done? You've already lost... 4K men, you have 72 divisions compared to everybody else. Hey, I gotta give them credit though. At least they're at least they tried. At least they're they're trying something. They're gonna take back this land for sure. There's no way Austria is ready for this, and I, I don't I doubt that they would join, right? Just because all these countries like Germany doesn't necessarily mean they would join in. Because we saw we saw a lot of that. We saw a lot of possible people. That they could have called in. Hold on, I'm viewing as Germany, right? Yeah. So, there is no faction. They can't call up anybody. They can try to form a faction themselves. They could form their own democratic faction. Yep, just just what we thought. I mean, we've got Russia heading towards the, uh, towards the east. And the Soviets continuing to head towards the east. So, but eventually the Soviets would win. Because there's not much, there's not valuable land over here. Yeah, I mean, there's there's less VPs as you head towards the east. I mean, now the question is, do we see somebody... Will we see somebody else join? And incredibly enough, at least at the moment, uh, Germany's doing fine. Kind of. I mean, they're they're holding back France here. Uh, I figured France didn't have anything in this territory. They have, they have a little bit. But Germany's going to get this land back over this way. And if they could hold them at these this line, I mean, I don't think that the trenches ever changed, right? Did they are they still getting like this this trench these trench bonuses? Also, who's leading Germany? Some guy named Frederick. 
Frederick. Hey, Frederick. The old, the old German leader, right? Could it be uh, Frederick? Bar uh, Barbarossa? I uh, know it's a different. It's a different Frederick, but that's kind of cool. That is pretty cool. All right, well, you guys got to figure your stuff out. How is uh, Sweden? How's the Scandinavian countries doing? They're mostly democratic. Yeah, no, they're they're entirely. They're guaranteed to be democratic. I think from the rest for the rest of this campaign. No white movement. The white movement will be uh, will be killed at some point. I think. You never can tell, though. I've seen this happen. I've I've seen that go other ways, where I really think a revolution. It's very clearly going to go for one side, and then all of a sudden, you know, I don't pay attention, and then really quickly they grab the VPs that are that are needed, and uh, and then they do their thing. So the British are now starting to drop off troops inside of the the Baltic region. It seems like. France is kind of pushed forward a little bit. Is uh is Luxembourg a part of uh, any of these groups? Nope, they're just chilling. Austria has their uh, their anger towards Italy, Serbia, and Romania. So does the Ottomans. The Ottomans don't let. So they've got like a mutual a mutual enemy. What is that? That's research. I should have taken note of that. That there's there's totally different research. Again, another thing that makes this mod just fantastic. Such a fantastic mod. Really, really cool. Uh, okay, so we're gonna. I'm gonna start wrapping up this episode. Uh, oh yeah, see, look, Italy's already dropped. That's. I'm telling you, this is the bane of Germany right here. This is always where I see the Allies land, um, which they did in uh, in World War II, I believe. So I guess it makes makes sense. Um, uh, I don't know. I think I might. We'll see what we do with this series. I, it looks like Germany's obviously going to get their butt kicked. They had no chance really from the first place, but I got to give them credit. At least they tried. Uh, at least they tried. So uh, I might come back. I might not come back. We'll we'll kind of we'll kind of see. And uh, but I will definitely be coming back to Hearts of Iron Four in general. Just not sure about if I will in this series. Yeah. So France is starting to now push forward. Uh, in, what's this? The Magnet Line? I mean, it's probably not there anymore, right? This is or this. Is too early before that, before that line or something? I don't know. We've got trenches. That's all I know. These are like level 10 forts in vanilla Hearts of Iron 4. So, yeah. Hey, hey, they kind of stopped it. And they've encircled these troops too. I don't know. Did Germany work on their uh, their navy or what? No, they have absolutely no navy. Maybe the maybe the Allies thought there you know there's going to be peace in Europe for a long time, and then all of a sudden two years later, a democratic Germany declared war again. All right, guys, I'm going to stop right there, um, and we'll see what happens. Other Hearts of Iron 4 series that I might do before the expansion hits is uh, maybe go back to the U.S. States mod. Everyone really likes that Hearts of Iron 4 uh, scenario that I used to do, individual 50 states all battle it out. Uh, that was pretty fun. Uh, might try to see if I if there's a way for, I don't really know if there's an easy way, I guess I, sh I should say, to transfer this map to like vanilla Hearts of Iron 4 and have them kind of duel it out you know, the way it was set up in, in the, the 1930s. Uh, or I could go back to the scenario and start off at 1910. Um, and then, you know, obviously there's going to be a huge, huge difference in how everything plays out because, uh, you know, things just change. Anyways, guys, I don't know. We'll see. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.